and top of the morning to you. Today is going to be a good day because my good friends at Mega Bikes, Ireland's premier motorcycle dealership, have loaned me this little beauty. Yes, of course, it's the much hyped Aprilia Tuono 660, and I've only got it for eight hours, so I'm going to shut up, get on it, and go and see what all the fuss is about. What about that for an intro straight to the point? Now, without sounding too shallow, I want to reveal that the first thing I'm always attracted to with any bike is its looks. Everything else will hopefully fall into place to supplement her beauty, but for now, I feel like this is the closest I've ever been to going out on a date with a supermodel. Before we get down to business, though, let me just tell you what to expect from this first date. I'll be taking her out on some nice, twisty Irish country roads to see how responsive she is before hitting the dual carriageways to test the potential for some sport touring. I'll also be giving you my live first impressions as we go. Oh my god. And of course I'll be drip feeding you with all of the technical stuff along the way. I'll then give you my honest opinion of this bike and our date. These fucking mirrors! Driving me mad! And whether we'll be seeing each other again. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please do, because I've got a lot more motorcycle dating to come in the near future. But for now, let's get back to business with Claudia Schiffer. It's like being on a rocket. And that's thanks to the 659cc parallel twin engine, which is the beating heart of this Tuono. It's a stressed member of the chassis, which helps keep the curb weight of the bike down to 183 kilograms, and the byproduct of this is that it also reduces vibration. Okay, hands up, and time for some home truths. I've always thought of Aprilia as the underdog to Ducati, but if this engine is anything to go by, it's already come out for the dogfight. It has 95 brake horsepower in this Euro 5 compliant version, as opposed to 100 brake horsepower in its sibling the RS660. This is because they make an A2 learner compliant version of the Tuono with 47.5 brake horsepower, and European law states that you can't have any more than double that figure, just in case you were wondering why the Tuono has 5% less ponies. Nevertheless, it has buckets of power and more than anyone could ever need on the roads. The 67 newton meters of torque at 8,500 revs still allows me to pull away in sixth gear, telling me that this baby just wants to play. I must apologize for this little bit of red tape here, but that's all I had to hand because I don't have any spanners or a little toolkit on me and there isn't any which comes with this bike and the mirror was just spinning around a little bit all it needs is uh, one of these little bolts here tightened up but i don't have the facility to do that but i had the tape with me because of all the different camera clamps so needs most boy scouts and all that dib dob dib dob next up the riding position is very easy on my 51 year old spine with minimal weight on the wrists, but this does start to beg the question, who is this bike for? And what is it for? Because I still haven't worked that one out yet. It's not quite a sports position, and it's not quite a touring position, but nevertheless it is very comfortable for my stature at 5 foot 8. It'll be interesting to see if there's any aches at the end of the day though. I've noticed the foot levers are very close to the foot rests on both sides, but that could be just because I'm not used to this yet. The seat, however, is so comfortable and reminds me of a gel seat I bought for my recently departed FJR. But don't even think about putting a pillion on that rear postage stamp. It's purely there for aesthetic purposes and definitely not for aesthetic purposes. Saying that though, it does detach and reveals a very neat small luggage plate, which again makes me think is Aprilia chasing the light sports touring market with this. The throttle response is pretty immediate, apart from a flat spot at around four to 6,000 revs in third gear, which I've noticed. But I'm sure that's only a software blip, as all of this technology is called ride-by-wire, which is derived from the aviation world called fly-by-wire. Its purpose is to give an immediate reaction to your input, which this bike does extremely well, as it's backed up by this incredible engine and a suite of electronics, which enable you to customize your riding style from individual to dynamic and then a more tame commute mode. Within all three of these modes, you can then adjust traction control, ABS, engine braking, engine management, and wheelie control. 
The RS660 comes as standard with an inertia measurement unit, the IMU, which detects if you're cornering and will then apply all of this gadgetry proportionally. You can also get that computer for this bike, but you do have to order it as an extra. And the same applies with a quick shifter and a blipper, which again, you have to order on this particular bike. It does come with cruise control as standard though, which comes in handy for several reasons. I love cruise control on a motorbike, especially for the sports touring side of things. So what you do is flick it in that way, hold it in, that engages it. You set your speed, flick it up, and the cruise control is active. And what that means is that I can take my hand off the throttle, hide the red tape to stop the eye saw. Isn't that great? You see, there's a, a purpose for everything on a motorbike. Of course, with acceleration like this, you need to keep the rubber side down. And because the bike has a slightly shorter wheelbase or rake, it keeps the rider weight over the front wheel since we're sat in a more upright position. This again works flawlessly and enhances the rider confidence since I'm getting superb feedback from the road. It's also helped, of course, by these Rosso Corsa 2 tyres, which come as standard on this bike. Very sticky tyres, I do love them. The trade-off, of course, is that they wear out quickly. I always say, by the sticky tyres, on average, you'll get 4,000 miles on the roads, so obviously not on track. And then uh, standard tyres, you'll get around 8,000 miles. That's what I use as an average, of course. There are many variables within that, but that's roughly what I go on. So I'm at 80 kilometres per hour now, 85. I'm just going to test the brakes again. Hopefully I won't stall it. Oh my god, and I'm not even jamming them on because I don't want to front end it, <laughs> not on a demo bike. I'm not able to do a proper vibration test because it wouldn't be fair, because these mirrors are obviously loose, even that one, look. So it would be unfair to start saying that the, there was vibration in the mirrors. Okay, time for a pit stop and a little look around this beauty. First thing I miss is a cup of tea because there's no storage space, but I'm sure there'll be a small selection of luggage options coming soon. It comes in three colours, which are acid gold, the grey, and of course this one, which is the black. You gotta love that acid gold though. The suspension is a simplified version of the RS660 with preload and dampening in only one front fork as opposed to both forks in the RS, which means a little bit more fiddling to get it set to your preference, but if you ask me, that's all part of the fun of a new bike. The brakes are Brembo monoblocks, front and rear, and also with an adjustable master cylinder. The seat height is 820mm, which surprisingly is even fine for me, but that's down to the narrow width where it meets the tank. Talking of which, it's a 15 litre tank, and 4 litres of that is the reserve, so when the light comes on, you'll have plenty of time to find gas. I know I've already talked about the riding position being very comfortable, and even as this test ride is drawn to a close, there's no backache or numb bum symptoms. The TFT again is very readable and bright, even on a day like this. You can also buy another add-on for this TFT called Mia, which gives you full access to your phone for calls, messages, music, and that basic pointer sat-nav arrow. However, it's time to address the elephant in the room. And it's this. It's the only thing I don't like about the bike. It looks like the front of the bike is detached from the rest of the mainframe. I've got to get that crazy thought out of my head. I'm all into futuristic styling, but I don't know why they've left as much space. I know the handlebars have to turn, but you could fit a young baby in there. That's it, you could have family days out on the Tuono 660. Maybe that's what they were thinking. What a machine! I love parallel twins. I've never been a big fan of the engine note out of a parallel twin, I'll be honest with you. Well, until now. But I've always loved the response, the torque, the bitiness. The instant delivery. But I've always preferred the sound of an inline four. But I've just changed my mind. This motorbike actually has every box ticked. What a bike! Every once in a while something special comes along, doesn't it? In every field, in every genre, not just motorbikes. And it sort of changes the mould, changes everything around it. And I know we all, including myself, 
keep trying to compare this bike to something. But why? Why do we need to do that? This bike is outstanding. In a field. Just like the farmer over there. I can't remember the last time a motorcycle impressed me this much. And I've been riding bikes for 30 years now. Actually slightly longer, 31. This is phenomenal. Okay, so we're now on the dual carriageway, as you can see. And there's a lot of wind drag on my body and head. In fairness, it's very clean air. But it's there. I'm not sure about going touring for an eight hour stretch. Definitely a weekend away, which is the void I'm looking to fill, to be honest. But I'm not sure I'd like to do the Wild Atlantic way on one of these. Somebody like me having already short legs to then have elongated arms. It wouldn't be a great look in fairness. The half fairings actually do a very good job of keeping the wind off my legs. Wasn't expecting that. However, the rest of your body, from your waist upwards, is just bombarded with fresh air. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and my time is up on this fantastic Aprilia 20660. That's it, folks. I'm back at Mega Bikes. I was rather hoping to be shot, but thanks to them, I got the chance to ride this incredible machine. What a wonderful day. And if you get the chance to ride one yourself, do it. Better still, if you get the chance to buy one, do it. Thanks for tuning in again, folks. I'm Dave Perry, Wheelie Good TV. Over and out. Unbelievable.